Looking to augment your household income by selling insurance? Well, if you're figuring out where to start or you're struggling to find your bearings, this is the place to be. Tita's gonna show you how in this video. What's up? You're watching Tita Talks, non-life insurance discussions with me, Miguel, who's always happy to try to make non-life insurance topics easier to understand for both agents and clients. Magandang magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday afternoon, this cloudy Sunday afternoon, to talk about the possibility of getting you guys into the insurance uh, into the insurance industry. You may have probably wondered that a couple of times in your past. Maybe there's something for me when it comes to selling insurance. Don't I have to be specialized to do that? What are my requirements? What do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to in order to start a career in selling insurance? Well, you've come to the right place. Tito's going to take care of all of these details for you, and we're going to try to make it as simple and as easy to follow as possible. But before anything else, I think something needs to be made really, really clear about this particular topic. And it's the, it's the point that um, applying as a non-life insurance agent is a different process from applying as a life insurance agent. Thanks to the unique culture and the trend of the market and as well as the media right now, um, life insurance companies seem to be more present and prevalent in most commercials, most TV commercials, most internet commercials, and that's not a bad thing per se. But if you are interested in becoming an insurance agent, one of the first questions you have to ask yourself is, am I going to sell non-life insurance or am I going to sell life insurance? Both of which have their own ups and downs though. But today, for today, we're going to focus on non-life insurance because that's what your Tito does. <laughs> Now, with that being said, in order to become a life insurance agent, you're going to need two very, very specific things to get started. Now, what are these two things? Those are going to be, number one, you're going to need an insurance company to partner with. And number two, you're going to need a license from the insurance commission. What? I have to get a license? Absolutely can't sell if you don't have a license as the practice of selling insurance requires uh, is required uh, to have a license as mandated by the insurance commission but don't worry we'll go through these steps individually so don't get scared yet help is right around the corner now let's first talk about our first step which is getting um, or finding and acquiring an insurance company to partner with the choice is actually yours though and you'll be very surprised to know as far as the insurance commission is concerned when you already have a license to sell insurance insurance agents or licensed insurance agents have the privilege of representing up to seven different non-life insurance companies under their belt so once you've gotten your license or when you already have your license if that's the first thing you you would try to accomplish you can actually go on ahead and get yourself accredited to at most seven insurance companies so Technically, the market is actually at your feet. You get to choose who to, um, uh, who to represent and who to sell. And if you want to sell multiple companies um, to different clients to expand the range of the products that you can provide, that is most certainly one of the privileges that you are entitled to as an insurance agent. Pretty good, right? But there are some agents who still just choose to cover one, still just choose to uh, represent one to make things easier on their end. Either way is fine, though. Uh, you're free to do what you want. But in order to make things easier for you, let's begin with trying to get yourself partnered with an insurance company. Sometimes um, when it comes to choosing a company with which to partner, you've got a lot of considerations to think about. Is it a good company? What's their track record? Who are their uh, major clients? Have they been in any recent scandals? How good are they doing in the market? And one of the most important things to look at probably when choosing an insurance partner or, a par uh, or an insurance company to partner with is, and you can ask anyone about this and you may want to take note, is their capitalization. Yes, that is right. When we, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about capitalization, to be specific, paid up capitalization, this will actually refer to the amount of capitalization they have already returned to their stockholders. As you all know, insurance companies have to be started with an 
incredibly large amount of funding. So a lot of business-minded individuals with access to these funds pull their funds together to set up the company initially, which is what happens in most cases. And as the company grows, as the company matures, of course, the profits that the company makes is returned in, in terms of paid-up capitalization to the initial people who started up the business. So Technically speaking, a really good way to tell if an insurance company is worth its salt is by telling how much money it's already returned to the people that set it up in the first place or to its major stockholders. And don't you worry, when talking to insurance companies, this is one of the first things they'll mention. And if they're really, really proud of it, it's also one of the first things they're going to brag about, especially the company that your Tito represents. And yes, you can join up with this particular company. All you got to do is to give Tito a heads up and we'll start talking. But putting that aside, when it comes to, uh, once you've chosen your insurance company, and I'm not going to list them here so that I don't sound biased at all. <laughs> um, once you've chosen a particular company that you, uh, a particular insurance company that you would like to, uh, uh, with which you would like to partner, um, it's simply a matter of going through their accreditation process. Now, what do we mean when we say accreditation? Well, in this process, you're not necessarily getting your license. What you're trying to do is you're trying to become acknowledged by the insurance company, by the said insurance company, that you are one of the agents uh, you are uh, that they sorry they are one of the companies that you as a particular agent are carrying under their belt so in short it's like you're applying but you're not technically applying for a job you're technically applying as an agent because one of the most important things to note about becoming an agent is that you are not exactly an employee of the insurance company no you're not seen as an employee but rather a valuable business partner with networks that the insurance company would, of course, like to tap on your behalf. So with that being said, since you're considered as a um, as a business partner and not necessarily an employee, you're not bound by the same rules that employees of these companies are held to. For example, you don't have to report to the office on a regular basis. In fact, the only time you'd have to go to the office or the only time you'd have to visit the insurance company is if you've got concerns, you're picking up your commission checks, you're, uh, you're actually taking care of claims on behalf of a customer, or you've got some very, very important matters to discuss with the insurance company. But besides that, you won't have any other reason to go to the office and the company is not, um, is not required to have your report whenever they would like to. Simply put, your time is in your hands since you're not employed by the insurance company. On top of that, since you're also not directly employed by the company, the company does not implement any quotas on you. Yes, you're hearing that right. No quotas for agents. Really, Miguel? What if I don't sell anything in a month? Will I still be considered an agent? Absolutely. Your seat, your application, your status with the company still remains the same even if you're going through dry seasons, which is why um, becoming an agent is actually a very flexible type of career path. You can do it full-time and you can do it part-time as well. As a side hustle lang, racket-racket lang sa gilid. You don't have to be maintaining a regular type of income, a regular amount of revenue generated in order to maintain your agent status. No monthly fees, no annual fees, no monthly and yearly quotas as well. As long as you're still an agent and as long as you're still interested in working with the company, the company is also interested in working for you, both in good times and in bad. But it is important to take note, though, that it's always up to you whether you want to crank up your selling, whether you want to crank up your efforts to increase your sales. If you do it as a side hustle and you only offer insurance when someone asks you about it, that's perfectly fine as well. No need to worry about that. And once you've gone through the application process and once you've become accredited by the insurance company, you'll also have to declare if you've gone through any licensure examination conducted by the insurance commission. Yes, that's one of the things you have to declare. It's all right if you don't have any license yet because you can ask for assistance from the insurance company to help you get that resolved as well. Yes, insurance companies may be able to help you file your exam permits, request for an exam schedule with the insurance commission. Although that's not a big issue right now because we're in a pandemic, 
and exams aren't conducted uh, right now. But that still doesn't stop you from applying as an agent. And with that being said, once you've uh, become part of a particular insurance company, welcome aboard, congratulations, uh, you'll be provided access not just to, um, uh, not just to uh, the insurance company's personnel who will actually help you get a license, you'll actually be subjected to the insurance company's training programs if they have any. So here you'll go through your usual product trainings, sales trainings if they have any, so that you're prepared to hit the market. So technically saying, the most that you have to do if you're really interested in a career in non-life insurance is to ask the proper people. You can go straight if you already know a particular insurance company in which you're interested. Or you can also approach your tito, who's more than happy to hook you up with a connection to an insurance company. Yes, I represent an insurance company, and we're more than happy to have you guys on board. So once you've gotten your accreditation through, and once you've gotten your license taken care of, then you can start hitting the market, then you can start marketing, and you can start earning as well. And to mind you, just to be very clear on this, Insurance agents always earn on a commission basis. That means every time you sell, you walk away with a portion of the sale. Simply put, that's how it works. And with that being said, I do know that I owe you an insurance term for the day. Let me take a look at my notebook here to see what I've got for you. There you go. <laughs> Our insurance word for the day is, say this with me, Compensate. Well, that may not sound as erroneous as it does. When we say the term compen compensate, it refers to simply paying someone or paying an aggrieved party whenever damage or liability is incurred, taking care of your liabilities, compensating them for any damages that they might have incurred, making monetary payments, or committing to the repairs or restorations yourselves. This is what we mean when we say compensation. And now, if you put the schwa's in correctly and any other sound you might have there, you're going to have to say this nicely and say this with me one more time. Compensate. One more. Compensate. And with that being said, thank you so much for dropping in on Tito Talks Non-Life Insurance Discussions. How are you going to use the term compensate? Uh, <laughs> how are you going to use the term compensate in a sentence? And... Who do you plan to join as an insurance agent if you really are considering it? Leave me a comment down in the box below. Let's talk about it. You may also have other questions as, uh, as to how to become an agent. Any other concerns? I'll be more than happy to answer that as well. So once again, this is your Tito Miguel always saying, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.